another tutorial video. Today's one is going to be showing how to take one of the dies from Tonic Craft Kit number 65 and turn it into your own homemade stencil and then we're going to use this stencil with some of the Nouveau products from the kit plus some of the patterned papers as well and then I'm also going to show you how you can still get an embossed effect with a homemade stencil as well that's just made out of thin cardstock. So um, I'll give you a quick run through of what comes in Tonic Craft Kit number 65. So there's going to be different selections of what you're getting. You know sometimes they give you an either or kind of option. So it's going to be either the Blue Blossom 6x6 pattern paper pad or the Sweet Sorbet one. And then it's going to be the 3mm navy blazer ribbon or the 3mm bright white ribbon. And I would presume you would get these two together or the other two together. I don't, I'm not sure if they're going to cross mix them or not, but those were the two that I got in my kit. And when you have a look at the unboxing video that I put up yesterday, I have got 11 different samples to show you um, using this kind of colour combination as well. So if you got this one as your colour combination, there's plenty of examples in the unboxing video, but you can also like, um, you know, transfer the ideas onto the Sweet Sorbet and White Ribbon um, ideas as well. So, uh, you're also getting a full-size Nouveau embellishment mousse, which we're going to be using in this video, and this one is peony pink. You're also going to be getting a full-sized Nouveau crystal drop, which is carnation pink, and this is a gloss drop, and we're going to be using that in this video as well. Then we're actually getting a craft pick um, in this month's Tonic Craft Kit. So I was raving on about this in the unboxing video. It's a fantastic tool, so really, really brilliant to add to your stash. Then, um, patterned paper or uh, craft perfect paper wise, we're getting five sheets of um, texture craft perfect, four different colours with two of the raspberry pink. We're also getting two sheets of the iridescent cardstock in a blue and a pink. We're getting one of the cotton handmade paper sheets in hailstorm, and then one sheet of their beautiful glitter card as well. Then Let's give you a quick look at the dies and stamps too. So I've also got the sticker in here as well. So this is the sticker from this month's kit. And then um, stamp wise, we've got tons of different sentiments and also this gorgeous floral design here. And then the main die set from the kit is how to create these like gate creator um, pieces that don't have this back cutting edge. And you've also got like a corner pocket piece, a gift tag, some closure mechanisms um, and a little banner to cut out the longer sentiments or the smaller sentiments will fit inside the gift tag as well. So that's just a little quick overview of what um, is contained within Kit 65, but if you want a full look at that, go check out my unboxing video. Okay, so for the actual tutorial, we're just going to be taking this one die from the kit and I'm going to show you exactly how you can turn it into your own homemade stencil for using with your Nouveau product. And we're going to run through using it flatly and giving a smooth finish. Um, onto a patterned paper or any of your cardstock as well, um, using it uh, smoothly but with some of the Nouveau drops in there as well. Um, so it had a little bit of the mousse left on my sponge plus the gorgeous carnation pink Nouveau drops to give a different kind of finish. Then this one was actually taking the waste from uh, what was still on my cardboard stencil from this one and flipping it over and squishing it onto this card to give this kind of like ghostly kind of effect. Then I also also used um, the embellishment mousse thickly through the stencil even though it's just a cardstock stencil you can still use it thickly and get this kind of impression and then I also discovered that even though this is just a cardstock stencil you can still emboss it in your die cutting machine as well the same kind of sandwich you would use to emboss a die um, and you can get this really cool effect as well so I'll run you through all of those ideas but first of all we need to make our stencil because I do have this one but if I'm going to be doing some wet techniques and I want to do a dry technique as well. Um, I will use this one for my dry technique and I'll show you all the wet techniques on the new one that we're going to create too. And um, you could also use this to create another card as well if you want to. Or you can keep it in your stash as a stencil to use because the more products you put on here you might end up getting less crisp designs because the product does build up and give like a feathery edge to it um, but the more kind of products and things that you use on it it will kind of like strengthen the stencil as well and give it a little bit more rigidity especially if you used um, maybe acrylic paint and stuff on the jelly plate because it would give a nice thin layer of paint over the top of it um, but and it would kind of give it more of like um, integrity to it as well uh, but you could use a thicker cardstock as well this was just a, um, a recycled cardstock so a, a thinner kind of weight card I think maybe it's like two. 
50 um, but yeah you can use whatever kind of weight that you want to so to start with this um, obviously when I was starting to do this one I wasn't sure what size piece of card that I would need um, this piece is obviously just a, a random scrap it goes off wonky at the end but it's roughly uh, six and a half inches then by the sort of eight and a quarter inches of a normal A4 piece of cardstock so you could start with that if you want to but I'm just going to show you exactly how I did it um, when I you know wasn't sure on exactly what sized piece of card that I would want um, to do this on so you're literally just going to take your corner die, place it so the sort of open edge and the two straight edges are in this orientation. So the open edge is along the short side of the A4 and the two straight edges are towards the middle because we know that we want to line these straight edges up to create this kind of design. Then you want to take that into position. One bit of tape should be fine because we're just working with the one die. And then I'm going to stand up because I'm going to use my big plates to be able to fit this A4 piece through the machine. Um, you just want to take your die cutting plates for your tangerine and place them onto there. Oops, nearly making an avalanche happen. Uh, bring your die cutting machine in, run this through because it was just on that end, I think it was on that end, I hope it was, um, I could just run it back through, yes, it was on that end. So we can remove this and then tap any excess off. You can poke from underneath and poke them off, but you don't need to because in this month's craft kit, um, we've got our little craft pick as well. So you can poke all of the pieces out. Then you also want to make sure that they're all off of your plate as well and removed from your piece that you've already cut. Then you want to take your die again with all of the pieces removed from it so it will cut nice and cleanly and you want to place it along here so you're lining up. Um, you see actually you can kind of tell from the die itself right on that back corner you can see there's only like a millimetre of the metal outside of the cutting line. So when you place this back up the other way and you can't see that cutting line anymore, you know that the cutting line is about a millimetre in from that metal edge. So you can kind of position this roughly like so. So you're not going to overcut into this section. We're going to keep them as four separate quadrants, but we want them to be as close together as possible. And if you know that the cut line is one millimetre in from that edge of the metal, you can kind of position it so you can see where it's going to sort of line up to give you that perfect little cross section. So we can take that one into place and then run this one through as well. I'll just go all the way through on this one. So we've got the second one cut there and we can take the die off again. Most of the pieces stayed in the die this time. And we can flip those pieces out of the way. And you can see now we've got that skinny little line between them. And these two are nicely lined up here because we um, positioned the die perfectly to uh, uh, account for that little sort of millimetre difference between the cutting line of the die and the metal of the die as well. So we can poke all those pieces out. And then again, we're doing the same thing. So we're lining up. Um, with that kind of edge. They're not going to completely match on this corner because they are going to be, you know, they're separate kind of pieces. They sort of one is a bit higher than the other one, but it still gives a really nice design on that corner anyway, even if they don't look like they're matching up nicely with the die. And again, we're going to line this up. So we're sort of lining the metal almost up with the previous cut line on this side. Take that into position. Run this through. Then we can, oh I chewed up the edge a bit there, it went off to the side, doesn't matter because it's just a stencil. And then poke all these pieces out and we can just cut the final one and hopefully it should fit perfectly in the gap that we have left for it as well. So see how easy it is to poke the pieces out when you've got one of these tonic craft picks. And tip all of the waste off, make sure it's all gone and then place the last one into here and you can see just how perfectly that lines up I think you can see there we go um, and then we just cut the final one okay 
then I can move my machine out of the way. And we can take this off to reveal our gorgeous stencil. So I just love that you can create your own stencils. Obviously you can do this with tons of different dies. I just felt like this corner one was quite a nice one to show you with because it gives you um, a beautiful square design, a much larger square design. Um, so yeah, really pretty design. And then all I did was, obviously I've messed up this edge of the, the cardstock here by hanging it over the edge of the plate and it got a little bit chewed up as it went through. But I'm just gonna trim this down. You could trim this smaller if you want to, you can leave it bigger, whatever kind of project you think you're gonna be using it onto. But I quite like to leave um, a large-ish border around the edge so that if I was gonna ink blend with it, which I can show you that as well before we get it messy, um, you wouldn't sort of risk like going right over the edge like if this was a stencil that you had bought it would probably be like up to here and then you kind of risk going over the edge but because you've made this yourself you can leave however much of a border that you want to leave and um, you can sort of know that you're not going to go over the edges which is nice. So I've got a piece of white card for us to work on. I'm just going to do all the techniques on the same piece of card because I have got a finished card to show you with all of the different ones. Um, but first of all, as I just said about ink blending, I've got my pink Tonic Nouveau brush and you can just place your stencil down and I'm just using whatever's left on this brush to ink this but you can get beautiful impressions with your homemade stencil as well. So you can do just inking if you want to. There was no ink pad included in the kit so I hadn't sort of thought to kind of show that on a finished sample but you can definitely do that kind of thing. Then you can also bring in some of your Nouveau embellishment mousse. I'm just going to put a little bit of it on my desk. And then I'm just going to use a piece of cut and dry foam um, because you can definitely use one of the um, Nouveau sponges. However, I know I am notoriously bad at forgetting to wash a sponge out and I would uh, I'm, I'd be less upset if I ruin a little piece of cut and dry foam than if I ruin one of the uh, Nouveau sponges. So um, I'm just going to go with a little piece of cut and dry foam. But you can um, pounce through your stencil if I bring you in a bit closer. With um, your embellishment mousse, using it thinly, I tend to like pounce it, which would give you a textured effect, which we can show later, um, but then sort of smooth it over. Because uh, with the Nouveau embellishment mousse, it kind of, you kind of want um, all of that mica or um, you know, everything that's in there that gives it that beautiful shimmer. You want it to sort of lay flat to give it that really beautiful uh, pearlescent kind of finish to it once it's done. So if you sort of rub around, it gives you more of that flat kind of finish to it. And it also kind of makes it um, bunch up around the edges as well, which can give a nice effect too. So that is using it thinly through your stencil. You can see you get just as beautiful of an effect as if you have used your ink to go through it, but you're using your gorgeous mousse to go through it. So you can do that. Then, using the same bit of cut and dry foam, you can also use, oh, I'll zoom you back out again for this. You can also use like a mixture of your uh, drops and your mousse as well. So I've still got that little bit of mousse out and we're gonna just add a, a rather large blob of Nouveau drop onto there. And you can do this with any of the Nouveau drop finishes as well. Um, then you can just pick up some of that with some of that leftover mousse that's on there. And then you can actually just use this to go through your stencil as well. Now a lot of the Nouveau drops, depending what finish they are, might give you a really subtle effect. So you can see this is looking really subtle, but if we bring in a little bit more of the mousse to go with it, we're gonna kind of like um, deepen that effect, but give the pearlescent mousse kind of like a really glossy finish because of the drop in there as well. And with this, you can go in a smooth motion to smooth it out, or you can go with a pouncy kind of motion to give it a little bit more texture, whatever you kind of prefer for this kind of technique. So we've got that portion there. You can use your drops through your stencil or drops and a mixture of mousse as well. It gives a slightly different effect. Then we can also do um, the mousse sort of three-dimensionally through your stencil 
as well. So I'm just going to move to a different part of the stencil. I was working in the same section for these ones because when I was doing my original cards, I got to the point where I'd covered the entire stencil and I felt like it was getting a bit um, delicate because it was getting wet with all of the product. So I actually dried it with my heat tool so that it was uh, more stronger again and, and dry before I did three dimensionally through the stencil. That's why I kind of was, was focusing on one side so I could use the mousse three dimensionally on this side of the stencil um, and it wasn't going to be uh, affected. So you can just take your palette knife or one of your media spatulas and scrape your mousse straight through it for however much you want to do. Um, with a homemade stencil you maybe are more likely to get some uh, like seepage underneath the stencil as you're putting your mousse through um, but I don't, I don't always mind that to be honest and if you had done something like this and you did really mind it you could always uh, change the design to have this die cut on top because you made the stencil from a die cut so you can literally just put another die cut over the top to hide any messy areas that have spilled out but that's how you can use it three dimensionally through your stencil so we've done ink, we've done flatly, we've done with the drops, we've done three dimensionally and then and I had also um, done a little bit of like textured stenciling through it on one of the other pieces that I was thinking about, oh, that I've um, done on one of my projects. So this can be like more textured over here. So you just sort of like pounce through it, but instead of going smoothly over the top, you keep like pouncing and you get this more like textured effect on there as well. So you've got really textured kind of look which gives a really different effect than using it smoothly. Smoothly is going to give that really shiny effect but textured is going to sort of break up that shiny effect. Um, and then I had also done on one of my other cards, um, you can sort of like press off the excess and try and get another impression. Obviously if you've done the whole stencil and you've used like Nouveau Drops, Thick Mousse and all sorts you can get better impressions. Um, but because I'm just doing a sample piece you can see how it does transfer but you, I've totally forgot so I left let it dry for a little bit um, but yeah you can get impressions off of your stencil as well then uh, the final technique to show you is going to be embossing your um, cardstock with your stencil so I'm going to go back to the really grotty dirty one um, that I was using for all of the other cards that I created just to show you can still get a really crisp clean look with embossing from a stencil that you've made and you've been using for a bit as well so with the um, stencil and creating an impression, I have already shown um, in the form of this sample um, how well it embosses onto about the 250 recycled white cardstock that I actually used to create the stencil from. That's what I used to emboss the stencil onto here. So I thought for the tutorial I'll show you some of the textured Craft Perfect um, paper from Tonic or cardstock um, and also some 300 GSM cardstock as well. So it's a slightly thicker weight and we'll see how well this kind of embosses into it. So for the embossing I'm going to go back to using my smaller half cut plate. Um, obviously your mat would be green, I just have a tan mat that's this small size so I'm going to use that one but if you're using your tangerine it's your white plate, your green plate and your green mat. Um, then I'm just going to bring my tangerine back in and then for this sandwich the way that it works is you take your green mat, your green tan mat, or green or tan, whichever colour you've got, um, then you take your cardstock and place it down. Let's go on the smooth side, um, so smooth side facing up for the Texture Craft Perfect. Then you take your stencil and you place that over the top and then you put your white plate on the top of that and then just run this through your tangerine. And then the tan mat squishes the um, cardstock up through your die cut stencil and you get this beautiful effect. So it works really nicely on the Texture Craft Perfect. I thought it would because it's a lighter weight cardstock so it can have it has that ability to kind of mould into the shape a little bit better and we'll pick up this detail with some mousse in a second as well but you can see how beautifully that works even with um, a mucky stencil so it doesn't have to be a freshly die cut one it can be one that you've been using for other projects other applications and um, you can you know 
still use that to create this kind of effect. So the next one we're going to take, I don't know how well this is going to work, so we're going to take 300 GSM white cardstock. Because this is a thicker cardstock, I'm just not sure how well it's going to like push up into all of those details. It, you, we might get details, but it might just not be as um, involved with all of the different designs as the first one. Plus we've also squashed this stencil a little bit now, so that could um, have a different effect on it too. But let's put that on there, then the white plate on top, and run this one through. And let's see what's happened. Oh, it has still worked! Oh, that worked really well! I'm really surprised that that worked so well. Oh, that's really lovely. I think that's actually deeper. I think it's actually given a deeper impression. I guess... I guess even though the cardstock is thicker, you would think it wouldn't um, like press up more, but because the cardstock's thicker, it's adding a bit more pressure. So maybe that's why you do get a deeper impression. Well, that's really good to know. There you go then. Use 300 GSM cardstock with your um, homemade stencil. Now this one is quite flat now. I think it would still work for a few more applications, but um, once it gets to this stage, you could come in, add some more mousse over the top and turn it into a decorative piece rather than um, using it as a tool. It could just become a decorative piece after you've used it this many times. I mean, this is the third time I've embossed it and I think I've created like five or six different backgrounds just from this one that I die cut plus the three that we've then embossed as well. So they really do um, last a long time if you're creating your own die cut stencils. So let's zoom you in and we'll pick up some of this detail. We could even, well, I could show you the deboss side on this one. Well, I think I prefer the embossed side. I will just go with the embossed side on both, but I'll show you how you can easily pick out the detail with some of your Nouveau embellishment mousse. So we can take a little bit of that out. And then you don't need any kind of applicator. You can literally just use your finger, or if you don't like getting mucky, um, you can definitely use a little bit of sponge as well to apply it. But I tend to want to get a really light kind of... Um, coating on it. I'm not that delicate to be able to just hit the detail but um, hopefully we can kind of show the effect here and um, as I was saying in my kit unboxing video uh, when I had used the mousse onto one of the dark blue patterned papers depending on the colour of mousse sometimes the colour will not really show through and it will mostly just be that pearlescent effect so we're actually just kind of getting uh, more of like a silvery tone on the top of this dark blue cardstock which looks really really lovely so I'm really pleased with how this is turning out um, really really gorgeous so because this is just embossed with a piece of card as the stencil it's not that deep of an emboss so we are catching the background but because it is embossed it's not going to like cover everything it's catching the background but it is leaving that little shadow effect around all of the details as well and because we went on to the smooth side of the cardstock it is still picking up some of that texture because we've kind of like squashed it all together but it gives a better result if I just show you on the deep embossed side, if we had embossed onto the textured side, the pattern becomes um, a little bit harder to see because that texture is really prominent, but that could be a look that you're going for as well, and actually I do really like the, the debossed side of it, or the opposite of what we were working with, but you can see how the texture is more prominent on the textured side of the card than on the smooth side, um, and you can definitely come back in and add a second layer as well. Wait until it dries just for a couple of seconds um, and then come back in and add a second layer to kind of hide a little bit more of that texture of the cardstock. But that is one kind of result that you can get with it. And then this is with the 300 GSM cardstock um, and we should be able to be slightly more delicate with this and maybe try to mostly just catch the detail but it's always very hard not to catch the background detail. Even on like a, a three-dimensional embossing folder, it's always difficult not to catch the, the background. So if we just highlight some of this, you can see that beautiful pattern popping out. Um, but you could have just left this white. This gave such a lovely deep impression. It would have looked lovely um, just being left white for more of like a wedding card as well. Really, really pretty for that. Um, but that is 
picking out some of the detail on this side and you can see the difference between if you've just used a smooth card or if you've used some card that has a sort of texture in it even if you're working on the smoother side because you're squashing it you do kind of get that texture coming through um, but you can see this sort of difference between a texture card and a smooth card. Texture card would be good for like um, a vintage grungy kind of effect because it gives more of like a skippy pattern whereas this is um, hopefully more of like actually showing the actual design really. But yeah, really pretty. And then we might as well just show you on the debossed side as well. So this kind of gives more of like an outline effect. This is more of like the actual die cut design. So I guess it really depends what look you're going for. Um, you know, to which side you would actually prefer to use. But I think both of them do actually look really pretty. And I do think this is holding up more than I thought it was going to as well. So really really gorgeous designs and they'll just make such quick and easy cards as well oh, I went and went a bit heavy there but you can definitely go heavier handed with this as well you could even have used your mousse on the cardstock beforehand so you basically make your own pearlescent cardstock um, and then you could emboss it you could have embossed pearlescent cardstock just by using the dies and the mousse from the kit so that's that effect and that's that effect and then this is on the textured side uh, that's on the smooth side that's on the textured side but the opposite effect of it as well so um, those are all of like the main techniques but um, I'll just clean this up and come back so as I was showing you earlier in the video um, like the difference between inking it using your mousse flatly using your drops through it using it three dimensionally through it or using your mousse but uh, giving it a texture when I was doing my original cards I had tried the, the texture kind of design but I did it onto this patterned paper and it wasn't really standing out enough um, I think maybe I did give up and not do a proper good job of um, getting the actual stencil design on there so I'm not sure how this is going to turn out but if you do do um, something like this whether you've done it three dimensionally whether you've done the smooth or the textured or the drops anything and you feel like it's not standing out enough from the patterned paper that you've used um, you can still like make this usable and make that pattern pop out so if I just get one of my Nouveau blending brushes um, there might be enough colour on here to kind of bring out some of it and you're going to need a um, kitchen roll to kind of buff it off as well you can actually sort of add ink over the top of it to try and help um, push the pattern of the patterned paper to the background and try and make the um, mousse come forwards. I don't know if we're going to get as good of a result with um, having the mousse applied in a textured fashion than if you had applied it in more of a smoother fashion because if you think about it a smoother fashion is more like emulating heat embossing it's like really nice and smooth so the ink is going to resist it but we can still get that kind of effect with the textured application of the mousse as well and that is a way to kind of like rescue a background um, where maybe your stenciling isn't standing out as much as you want it to um, you can then ink blend over the top of it push the pattern backwards a little bit and bring the stenciling forwards a little bit to kind of create a different design and you know make something more usable that you might have thought was not really salvageable so just buff that off a little bit more again and then you can actually still use this kind of piece and the pattern is more popping out now so that's a nice way of if you've used um, the mousses on top of something that's a little bit too busy for them um, and you can't quite see the pattern in there just a little bit of ink blending and you can see it perfectly and you can still see the patterned paper behind it so you're not like putting so much colour on there that you're obliterating the patterned paper you're just kind of um, deepening up the tone so there's more difference in colour between the mousse and the patterned paper that you've worked on so, because uh, I wasn't sure if that would give a really nice tone on tone kind of effect, but it felt like it looked more like some kind of mistake. Like, this doesn't really look like a flower here, but when you add the ink over the top, you really can see that flower come back through. So, um, I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial video. Um, working with Tonic Craft Kit number 65 and showing you how to create your own die cut stencil just from um, cheap thin recycled white cardstock or any cardstock you have in your stash um, you can go for a thicker cardstock as well if you want to you can try what I was uh, I think I mentioned it in my advent series I was experimenting with whether it made a difference um, 
laminating one side of your cardstock and then die cutting it to create a stencil and to be honest there wasn't really much difference in the results so I would just say just go with your cardstock um, it's going to save you a lot of time and be a lot less hassle of like poking the pieces out when you've laminated a piece of cardstock and you try to po poke the pieces out of it um, it's harder to get them out so um, just go with your regular cardstock create your own die cut stencil and then you can use it um, onto your normal papers your patterned papers your texture papers whatever you want to use it onto just thinly through your stencil um, in a smooth fashion you can use it um, use drops through your stencil thinly um, in a smooth kind of fashion maybe with a little bit of texture in there as well you can use your mousse thickly through your stencil and get a thick raised design you can actually when you've been using it thickly or with the drops you can actually flip your cardstock stencil over and get an impression from it as well depending how much product you have on the front of your stencil depends on what kind of impression that you're going to get from it but you can do that too and then um, you can also apply your uh, embellishment mousse in a textured fashion by pouncing with your sponge um, and you can also fix tone on tone kind of colours with a little bit of ink blending and you can also use your stencil to emboss your cardstock as well and create your own embossing folder kind of looking design as well so really hope you enjoyed this tutorial video sorry if it was a long one but thank you so much for watching um, and if you want a closer look at everything that's in tonic craft kit number 65 do check out my unboxing video that went up yesterday as well so thank you for watching and i will see you again in the next video bye <laughs>